Well, hello, all you degenerate sinners. Uh, today, we are looking at uh, an Islamic, a Muslim fundamentalist, uh, for today's Fundy Sunday. All right, well, let's just uh, get into it. Um, I've been told that women in Islam wear a veil because in this way men will treat them respectfully. Um, but I see the veil as a form of oppression because why should they have to cover themselves um, because of the weakness of men? Shouldn't they be treated with respect regardless? Could you please? She's absolutely right. It is the weakness of the Muslim men that causes all these problems, except it's put onto women. The responsibility is all put onto women because... Islam, at least this version, the um, Quranic version of Islam, is fundamentally patriarchal. Patriarchal? Please explain the veil, and did Mary have to wear a veil? Madam, Madam, your Bible says, your holy Bible says, you know. Paul, Paul, Paul is telling you that the woman must cover her head, that the woman who doesn't cover her, shave off her hair. Your Bible. It is true that um, Christianity has a lot of these fundamentalist beliefs, these ancient uh, oppressive beliefs, demands in the Bible. Now, Christianity has evolved past the Bible which is one of the strengths and why Christianity is better than Islam. But they're ignoring their holy text, so that's kind of a um, hypocrisy. But I'd rather have progressive hypocrisy than uh, them having conservatively stuck to the word of the text which is horrible and i don't mean progressive and conservative in political terms um yeah the, the other thing that makes christianity superior is that the bible is not at least according to most sects of christianity the bible is not the literal infallible word of god um but it's just an interpretation made by men that that allows christianity to be a little more progressive because you can literally just ignore parts of it, which is good. You can ignore the parts that make the least sense, sort of, or some parts that make no sense. Anyway. This is that. <laughs> the woman, the woman who bears her hair, says, like, shave them off. Shave it off. That's what the Bible says. And you woman, the, your Bible says she must not be allowed to open her mouth in the church. But that's your churches. They don't believe all that. And Yeah, so um, this is part of the problem of these religions is they treat women like second-class citizens and all in the name of protecting women. Oh, they have to be protected Men and women have different roles, too. So men protect women, women uh, raise the babies, and men do all the important decision-making, right? Hmm. I wonder how that could get corrupted. And your people don't believe in that. So you are inviting trouble. You know, because of this, in America, in New York, no woman is safe after dark. No woman is safe in France. He, you're, he said you're inviting trouble. France. During daytime, women have been raped in the street. And people just walk by, looking the fun. Say, or maybe they're enjoying themselves. Oh, so unlike in Islamic countries or countries where there's high Islamic immigration, where they gang rape women in the streets. Oh, yeah, that's totally different. Hmm. Woman is being raped. No, no. I said you are inviting it. Look, this modesty. The nuns. The nuns. You know the nuns. He just said you're inviting it. So he's. Li this isn't approaching victim blaming. He's literally victim blaming. Literally, you're inviting the rape by dressing, by not wearing hijab, by bearing your hair. You're inviting rape. Even though most people manage not to rape. So you'd think that the vast majority of people 
not raping people would tell you that it's not the woman, it's not the uncovered hair that's causing the rape. It is the minority of people who can't handle themselves that is causing the rape. This is exactly the problem. This is why this is a definitely a fundamentalist. Um, and yet this is explicitly, explicit victim blaming. He's not even ashamed of it. Yeah, I believe the term is taharush. For a, it's a kind of a <laughs> custom from... Islamic areas uh, translates to rape gang, rape game, which is a gang rape <laughs> of where men group up and follow women and just gang rape her in the streets. And this has a name because it happens a lot. Um, and yeah, the uh, certain news outlets want to pretend it doesn't happen, but. It does. Um, I'm sorry. Roman Catholic Church. Nobody gives them a second look. If Mary, the mother of Jesus, came along, you won't give her a second look. There's literally a nun fetish, dude. But my dear sisters, those women on your gold coast, that's just Carbaro and all that with bikinis and tangas and G-strings. Look. <laughs> sure. And yeah, just because nuns also cover up, which, which is a, a very cloistered, um, isolated group of Christian, uh, like clergy, uh, whatever, uh, but they're women, exclusively women, right? That's still sexist and paternalistic and um, oppressive. That doesn't make it okay. That's a two-quoquet fallacy. Both are wrong. You can still be spiritual and like show your hair. It doesn't matter. Um, and it, it comes from the same tradition, exactly the same tradition. These are um, Middle Eastern Abrahamic religions that come from the same sexist culture that oppressed women and treated them like chattel, okay? And back then it made sense that you wouldn't, I mean, <laughs> in their way, it made sense that you wouldn't want men raping your women. That was an assault on your property. So you did everything that you could to um, disincentivize it, cover them up. And this guy is worried about um, bikinis and stuff. Well, you don't have to uh, go look at that. But it's attracting <laughs> look even an old man like me I tell you like that. <laughs> Literally, this guy has just said women in bikinis make me horny. It makes my pee pee hard. So you bad. If if I went there, I tell you I'll be burning inside. What the fuck? <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. I'm telling you, look, this is the nature of man. God made us like that. Yep, so he's just excusing men getting horny, overseeing a little bit of skin, a little bit of hair, and oh, God, God made us want to rape women. Just want to take that woman. There's, there's no concept of, like, emotional intimacy with this fellow. Um, no, you just see a woman and you want to rape her. That's just the way God made men. And if women in any way dress to provoke that, then it's her fault. It's not just her choice. The thing that allures man more than anything on earthly existence is woman. Do you know that? I don't know. The Quran says. The Quran. So what? 
Are you saying beauty is a bad thing? They're too beautiful. God made them too beautiful for men to handle somehow. Answers. Fear in the sight of men is the love of things they covet. Number one, women. Then sons. You know, I got 11 sons. I can make my own football team. You know, how, how, you know it makes me feel proud. I got That's disgusting. 11 sons, you know, my own football team, my own cricket team. Mm -hmm. Well, Benin, and number three, well, Anatir al Mukantarati min al Zahabi will fit and hoarded heaps of gold and silver and wealthy land and horses branded for excellence. Okay, so he just said that the number one thing that women or that, that men covet on this earth is women, then, then sons. And then he said, oh, but I'm proud to have tons of sons. Okay, so what's wrong with women? Somehow you gotta shame the women, but you don't have to shame the sons or shame the father for having tons of sons. The fuck? And all this. This is the list that is given in the Quran. Number one, women. The Quran says. Women. This kind of rhetorical bullshit just pisses me off. Like, actually more than what he's actually saying, because he's, because tr it tricks people. You just have to say things in a sing-songy manner. And people just... Oh my god. It's oh, just disgusting. The thing that allures man most on this earthly existence is woman. And I'm telling my Western woman. friends that I don't have to prove that to you. I don't have to convince you. I said, you see, in my country, in the city of Durban, city of Durban, I think we'll end with this. We'll end with this. Okay? We'll end with this. Please end soon. In the city of Durban, there is a firm called Lucian Motors. They sell second-hand trucks. You know, lorries, lorries, trucks. You call them trucks here too? Trucks. We call them trucks. And on the trucks that they advertise, there's a woman in the bikini on top of the truck. Then G Nots, they sell farm implements. And on the tractors that they advertise, there's a woman in the bikini on top of the tractor. I'm asking these Westerners, I said, what has a woman in the bikini got to do with a second-hand truck or with a tractor? Oh, no. Except the man. You see, the woman is being dangled, so you'll read the Edward. Um, yeah, beauty sells, sex sells, who fucking cares? And did you know that women and men both prefer to see women in advertisements? Oh my god, it's almost like they're pretty and people like looking at pretty things. Wow, what a concept. Oh. And BMW, I don't know you have BMWs here. It's a motor car, it's a motor car supposed to be a little better than the Mercedes-Benz. I'm not in the market for it. You see, I started with the Volkswagen Beetle, I did 120,000 miles, and I had to change for another Beetle, and another Beetle, and another Beetle. Then they stopped making the Beetle, you know, Chris, Volkswagen Beetle. They started with the Golf, so I had to buy Golf number one, Golf number two. I'm still not in the market for a BMW, but I'm forced to read this advert in my news. Forced to read the advert in your newspaper. No, you're not. You don't have to fucking read it, you dumb fuck. Newspaper, I see a BMW motor car. And with a woman in the scampi, skimpiest of bikini, what do you call the tanga? You know, the G-string. She, she's standing in front of the motor car. And it's, it's written at the bottom, test drive her now. Somehow that's funny. I don't, I don't know why. I'm asking, I'm asking the woman of the car. The woman is buying the car. I think I know why, because these people just laugh. Literally, fundamentalists just laugh at like secular shit. They're like, <laughs> look at these ridiculous people. That's literally... <sighs> I guess it's kind of like how we laugh at them. For being fucking weirdos. And the her is underlined. Test drive her now. I said, look, this is what you're leading yourself to. This is the Westerner. He sells his mother, his wife, his daughter. His He's complaining that he has to read some advert. This is just avoidance coping. This is psychology. So he's sheltered himself so much that he's incapable of controlling himself when he's exposed to the, the, the sexuality, this 
someone's fucking body, something everyone has, and that you're supposedly his God made. So he's not strengthening himself from temptation. He's just avoiding it. So he's so he's so weak. He's done nothing to help himself. That he, that when he's when he's actually confronted with it, he's done nothing to strengthen himself. Then when he sees it, he goes, "Oh no, a bikini! Oh, I'm burning up inside! Ooh, I've got a boner! What do I do with my boner? Oh no!" This is what you're leading yourself to. This is the Westerner. He sells his mother, his wife, his daughter. His wife is a star, and she's being mangled on the screen, simulating rape. And the, the fuck? Mangled on the screen, being raped. Oh, Look at the way he phrases this, as if the man is in control of the women in his family. It's absolutely nauseating. This is the problem. In this culture, women don't make their own choices. He just wants all the women to be under his control, or the man's control, so that he doesn't have to control himself. That's just weakness and pathetic. And, and simulating rape? Do they enjoy it? You, do you enjoy your wife being simulated? <laughs> Simu what? Simulated rape? He's the one who just said rape is the fault of the woman for dressing certain ways. So apparently he's not concerned about that. Um, and how is seeing someone's skin simulated rape? Rape is non-consensual non -consensual sexual content. Ugh, pff, why can't I talk? Non-consensual sexual contact. So you're just a, he's just a lying piece of shit. And... He said, it's not real rape, but you know, do they enjoy it? You, do you enjoy your... They enjoy it. Um, yeah, you can't enjoy rape, liar. Uh... Wife being simulated. It's not real rape, but you know, it's simulated. You can see everything about it. She's being raped, your mother, your wife, your daughter. And you enjoy, your wife is a star. So, sick, sick. Simulated rape is um, like rape fantasy and rape fantasy porn. Um, and wearing a bikini is nothing close to simulating sexual assaults. And, and many people, in fact, do enjoy sharing their wife or partner or just seeing their wife modeling look beautiful and feeling beautiful and just allowing her to do what she wants to do. What is so wrong with beauty? Just because some people are really creepy when they see beauty? It's too beautiful for you to handle? It's just just pure weakness. No, alhamdulillah, praise be to God. We haven't come to that sickness yet, we Muslims. We oh no, you have come to that sickness. You actually exacerbate that sickness by um, by trying to sweep it under the rug. You're actually making yourself weaker to it. Because when you're avoiding it, you you make no um, no um, coping mechanisms where you're able to um, offset whatever drive you have and, and deal with it. <laughs> you have come to that sickness. You just admitted it. You are so weak that when you see a woman dressed scantily that you burn up inside and you just want to rape her. And that's your fault because you have not strengthened yourself to deal with temptation. You just avoided it. So you become weaker and weaker and weaker. It's like if you avoid um, going to the gym, yeah, you're never going to have to actually exercise, but one day, if you do have to exercise, you're not going to be able to, I don't know, outrun the bear or whatever. You're just going to be weak. You're not working that muscle. Oh, and, um, yeah, this all started out with not covering your hair. So he's comparing G-strings to rape and, and comparing that to not covering your hair. 
by the way, we've we've come a long way from that point. I just wanted to point that out. Fucking disgusting fuck. Try. We try to keep away from it. This is... <laughs> yeah, exactly. You avoid it. Meanwhile, if you actually just realize what it is, just a body that may or may not be beautiful, depending on your personal tastes, then you're you're going to lose your shit every time you see a woman because you're a weak, pathetic piece of shit. Um, it, if, if you just dealt with it, then it would be commonplace or you'll have practiced self-control. You know, actually respecting women and their choices and their bodies and not losing your shit whenever you see them. Right? That's respect. Instead of expecting them to control everything for your sake. How about you control yourself? Start with yourself, not others. This is a fundamentally toxic um, way of looking at things, and this is what's wrong with a lot of things. Not working on yourself, but trying to make other people um, tiptoe around your weaknesses. This is your pleasure, your privilege. We have no right to force you, but we say you are playing with fire, my child. What is wrong with the body? That the human form that your God supposedly made for you, it's just too good for your weak ass to handle. And what about women who ogle over sexy men's abs? I'm, modesty is different for men, but they believe in modesty for men too. <sighs> Look, I'm not saying everyone has to be a slut. <laughs> Do whatever you want, but don't tell other people to cover up just because you're too weak to handle it. And you're going to pay the price. You're paying the price now, and you will pay the price. Okay. Oh, my God. There is no price in a Western, objectively superior society. I know ex-Muslim women, so it's not like I just am coming at this like, like a foreigner, like um, American privilege or whatever. I actually know... I actually hear directly from the source how horrible and oppressive and all-encompassing this kind of culture is. Preaching like this and uh, preaching in general is specifically designed to manipulate because it sounds nice. And I'm aware of that, which is why I instantly hate anyone who sounds like they're purposely trying to be charismatic and talking in that sing-songy kind of way. Basically, anything except natural speech is kind of disgusting because I just see that as manipulative. And it, it is manipulative, and the fact that I know it is, is what's gross. Um, like Michael Eric Dyson, that guy is one of the most deplorable sophists on the planet. He just uses big words to sound smart and he says it in a sing-song manner to sound like a preacher to seem like he knows what he's talking about when really it's just a word salad anyway yeah this is why his job is so bad i'm i'm not telling people to dress scantily clad but unfortunately the hijab itself is actually evil and oppressive what it is, is a public symbol of agreeing with the kind of misogynistic rhetoric this imam is spewing. What a hijab is, is a symbol that women are second-class citizens, a public declaration of the worthlessness of women's autonomy. It isn't just a fashion statement or a convenient way to go unnoticed by men, it is a public cry that all women around you are being disgusting, immodest whores who invite rape by men who should not be expected to hold themselves back because it's the way God made them. It's unfortunate because a headscarf could be a nice fashion thing, except it's being corrupted by this kind of rhetoric. By the way, men aren't staying away from hijabi women out of respect for their purity. If they respected women's purity, they wouldn't rape them for showing hair and skin. They're staying away from hijabis because either they're just beneath their notice, it's not actual respect for themselves as a human being, they're just not horny, um, or it's because men know 
the hijabi is a fundamentalist misogynist woman who thinks women are second-class citizens and they don't want to talk to a weirdo who's ashamed of their own body no less their hair now respect for women is letting them make their own decisions treating them as equals even if they decide to show skin and hair respect for women is learning to control yourself around them because they are people and not objects Respect for women is recognizing their beauty while recognizing their autonomy and their humanity. Disrespect for women looks like Islam, where the man just treats her like a piece of meat that must be locked up or else it would just be consumed right away because men are not expected to have self-control. Yep. And that is, um, that's our video for today. I don't really have much more to add to that other than um, I'm feeling a little nauseous right now. So let's wrap it up. Bit of a shorter episode today, but I hope you enjoyed it. Alrighty. Dog bless.